In the realm of fettered potential, nothing in Blender stands out as a greater example as its speakers. What could be an invaluable tool for sound design and animation is cut out to a token gesture, a promise of features yet to come, with no tools that are realistically useful outside of the most basic functionality. This is the case so no longer. Inet is here with the Blender audio overhaul to unleash that which has been left unrealized by the impalpable march of uppercase. The script can be broken down into three distinct parts, master audio, action audio, and motion audio. Master audio is an overhaul of the default speakers. The other parts present you with completely new features which weren't possible in Blender beforehand. While Blender's default speakers offered no form of automation and can sustain only a single sound effect at a time, the audio overhaul's master speakers lifts you from this tedium with the ability to loop a sound effects playing, an option to randomize the sound that plays as well as when it plays, alongside the alluring ability to have one speaker handle multiple sound effects. Say you want to move your animation track, speed it up, slow it down, loop it, duplicate it. If you have any desire to associate sound design to an animation, you will soon find yourself wallowing in the piteous pits of malcontemptible manual labor, to the point that it can't even be considered a viable option. Action Audio ties your audio to the animation, giving automation to this entire process, updating to match the animation with the click of a single button. Lastly, we have Motion Audio, which allows you to drive the volume or pitch by the speed at which the object or bone is moving. This, now that we know exactly what this script is and what it does, let me explain how you actually use it. The master speaker replaces the default Blender speakers, so there's no confusion of where to find them. To start off, you can add a speaker by pressing the plus button here, removing it with the minus and moving it around with the arrows. This is, this is, this is how the list box works in the rest of Blender. It's consistent. Hovering over the boxes and arrows will give you additional information about them. The same is true for all buttons and values, as is usually the norm inside of Blender. Once you've got all the items in the list you need, you can click on one of them and open a sound effect of your choosing, just as you can in Blender's default speakers. The frame sets on what frame the sound will play, and that's the basics already explained. Press Generate above, and it will generate whatever sounds you've put in the list at the frames you've chosen. You might have noticed these two tick boxes on the right. The first one mutes the audio. This suppresses it from being generated. The other one, random, will randomly choose a sound to play from a selection. The selection is made from all the sounds which are set to play on the same frame and which have random enabled. If you have three sounds all in the same frame, two with random enabled and one without, when you generate the audio, one of the two random sounds will be chosen to generate, while the other one without random will always generate. Likewise, if you have sound effects on different frames with random enabled, it will use all of them anyway. If you want to use this random feature but need to shift when the sound effect triggers, perhaps for example there's a moment of silence at the start you need to remove, then you can use the offset slider. The offset will change when the sound is played but will keep compatibility with the random feature as just mentioned. If you see below, there's a drop down called looping. This lets you repeat a sound multiple times without the hassle of having to place every single effect yourself. The loop gap is how often the sound will be repeated. The default is 30. 
in a scene where the frame rate is 30 frames per second, that means the sound will play once a second. The loop count changes the number of times the sound will play. To use the example I just mentioned, setting the loop count to 10 will mean the sound loops 10 times in 10 seconds and then stops. However, setting the loop count to zero allows it to just loop until the end of the frame range. At this loop gap in a scene with 1000 frames, a single click here will generate 34 sound triggers. Change the setting and another click, and everything will update without trouble, scuffle, or tassel. The last setting here is this random offset. While the initial sound effect will always be on the frame set here, all other loop sounds can be moved randomly forwards or backwards by this amount. Set this to zero, and the interval will be regular, like the ticking of a clock. Put this to a higher value, and the interval becomes more regular, and can be used for sounds such as the atmospheric noises of a bird, or a Geiger counter, ticking its haunting melody tune. Combine the random offset with the random feature and a few decent sound effects, and you have a truly powerful tool in atmospheric sound design. Among many other purposes, you will no doubt find. Another feature unique to this audio overhaul is some basic sound editing functionality. In default Blender, you couldn't even fade in a sound effect without manually animating the value yourself. Go down here in a speaker, and you'll find an audio editing dropdown. Tick the box, open it up, and there'll be four settings. The two here, fade in and fade out, allow you to gradually increase or decrease the volume of the sound effect from its start or end point. Just for an example, here we've got the sound of crows. The sound starts innocently, plays up until about frame 500, and then stops instantly. With a fade in set to 50, we can now hear the difference clearly at the start. To use fade out, however, I first have to show you how to use these settings below. Cut start simply cuts off this number of frames from the beginning of the audio. If we see here, at about frame 350, there's the sound of a car or a van or something. By using a cut start of 350, the sound of the vehicle is present right away at frame 1, because all the previous frames of sound have been removed. Now the duration this is required for the fade out to work. Just like cut start, it'll remove audio, but this time from the end of the clip. Put this to 50, and whatever the value of the clip start is set to, the audio will stop after 50 frames. 50 frames after the audio starts, that is. But you can still hear the van as before because the sound removed from the clip start is still being removed. Put a clip start back to zero, and it'll play from the start of the sound, but still stop after the same 50 frames. Having this value on zero, its default, won't cut to any audio and the whole sound will play out to the end. Now when it comes to fade out, this duration value is what's used as an end point when the sound will stop. This is needed because Blender itself does not have a way of telling how long a sound effect lasts for. So here you have to set it yourself. Just as in another point in this tutorial, if you need to find the exact end frame of a sound effect, you can go here to playback and enable sound scrubbing. This means that as you move frames left and right, you'll get a small clip of audio playing. So here we can remove the audio clipping and generate the full sound effect. 
find the exact frame when it is muted, but the sound effect stops naturally, and use this as the duration, so the whole thing will be used. But for the rest of this example, the exact length doesn't matter, but that's how you can find it if you need it. Now with the settings here, a fade in of 0, fade out of 50, duration of 50, and cut start of 0, we'll have a sound effect that starts instantly, then immediately starts fading out, becoming silent on frame 50. Another way of putting it, fade in of 30, fade out of 30, duration of 120 and cut start of 350, and we have a clip of crows and the sound of a vehicle, which takes one second to fade in, plays at full volume for two seconds, then fades out for one second. As I mentioned before, Action Audio ties the sound design directly to the animation. This means that if you duplicate the animation track, linked duplicate, or use the same action in another model, the sound design is preserved. This also means that changing the settings in one place will change those settings in all other places as well. Likewise, modifying the track, changing its speed, its location, or looping it, changes when the sound will play and how it will be generated. As before, you have a list and can add sound to the plus. There's a random and mute tick box as last time, and a space where you define which sound should be used. However, the frame value works a little differently. Rather than setting on which frame the sound is played on the world time, it sets the frame locally to play on, within the action. In other words, it doesn't matter where the action strip is, when it starts, or if it's been sped up or slowed down, the frame will always be the same. Let me just quickly define, an action is an animation, a collection of keyframes. A track is a container for an action. You can have one action used inside of multiple tracks, but you can't have multiple actions inside of a track. The system of tracks lets you duplicate and move and modify how an action plays out without changing the action itself. That means to find the frame you want to be on, you need to find that frame within the action, regardless of the speed or the location of the track. While it's possible to just work this out in your head by taking the frame that it's on now and factoring in the playback speed, this takes a bit of experience. So the simplest way of finding the frame you want for a beginner perhaps is just to add in an action strip of the same type. Now the reason this is necessary is because simply looking at what frame you are on what frame you want the sound to start on, won't take into account the frame the track is on, or if it's playing faster or slower. These things do not change the local time inside the action itself, and since the sound design is linked to the action and not the track, it will throw things out of whack. The last of the three audio types, motion audio. This one's a little more complicated, but we'll still have the same list of items and way of selecting sounds. From there, things change. There's no way of setting a frame, just a setting for a duration. This is because the audio is driven by the speed of an object's or bone's motion, rather than by a specific trigger a moment in time. There's an option to set the duration, which is how long the sound effect lasts before needing to loop. If you're unsure of how long the sound effect lasts, you can quickly generate a speaker and add the sound, set its frame to zero, and find out for yourself by generating and then listening to it. You can turn on audio scrubbing here, which means going forward and backwards frame by frame, plays a little clip of the audio. Find the frame at which the audio is muted, and use that number as the duration. 
If instead of a short sound effect that loops, you have one long sound effect that covers the whole range, you can skip finding the exact duration and just put a big number. Now these location rotation scale boxes determine which values are used in terms of finding an object's speed. By default, these three are active, meaning that any change in the location, the x, y, or z axis of an object or bone is used. See here in the example, the object is moving on all three axes and the audio is continual just as their motion is. If I disable X and Z, you can see the audio now starts and stop with the Y location of the model. The animation of the model is the same, but X and Z movement is no longer being used. Likewise, you can set it to use the rotation or scale values, or everything at once. The drive volume and drive pitch checkboxes just determine whether the speed of the object changes the volume or pitch of the sound effect. Please note though that the way in which Blender changes a sound effect's pitch is by speeding it up or slowing it down. So if you're using drive pitch, be sure to be using one long sound effect rather than looping short sound effects or there'll be overlaps and gaps in the audio as Blender changes its speed. You can use a free piece of software, such as Audacity, to loop a short sound effect and export it as a single long sound effect if you need to. This drop down here, Range, lets you set how much the volume and pitch can be changed. Max volume or max pitch sets how loud or high pitched the sound will be able to go when the object or bone is traveling at its fastest. The fastest speed is calculated relatively, so if the fastest an object goes is 10 meters a second, then that will have the same volume as if the fastest speed was 100 meters a second. It's relative to the fastest it goes, naturally. The minimum is how quiet or low pitched the sound will go at its slowest speed. Just a side note, if you aren't driving pitch, then setting max pitch will just set the pitch at all times, and changing min won't do anything. Another note is that when you're driving volume, the sound will stop if the object stops. It won't continue to play until the end of the sound effect. But when you're driving pitch but not volume, the sound effect will play to its end. If you don't want to change the volume, but you do want the sound effect to be cut off when the object stops moving, then set both min and max to 1 and have drive volume turned on. That's just a Easy workaround for that. Also, reversing these sliders so that the min is higher than the max will invert how it works. In other words, the faster an object goes, the quieter it gets, the slower, the louder. This is the same for pitch. Down here at the bottom, max velocity cap and min velocity cap. This allows the script to ignore fast or slow speeds. There's an object here, it starts motionless, then speeds up to 10 meters a second. If we put the minimum up to 3 and the max down to 7, that means that the sound won't play until it's moving at least at 3 meters a second, and won't get any louder than it already is once it reaches 7 meters a second. The cap just means that you can make a script ignore motion which is faster or slower than what is set. If you have an armature selected, you will see an extra setting to select the bone, which should be tracked. If you don't select anything, the script will track the movement of the armature as normal, as though it's an object. Setting a bone will start tracking the bone instead. When you do that, a new setting will appear for tracking the bone. Logo space will only track how the bone is animated to move, and would ignore the motion of the armature around it or the bone's parents. 
Post space will track its location and its change in location relative to its parent bones. And world will track it in world space, meaning that even if the bones are all motionless, but the armature itself is moving, it will detect movement and modify the sound. All these audio types have some shared features between them. Above the list, there's a generate and clear button. This generates audio, or updates the audio, of the selected object's action or armature only. Likewise, clear will delete the audio of the selected object only. When you click generate for the first time, a collection will be created. It will be marked as read only, and I advise you to abide by this suggestion since renaming things or changing things inside are likely to be lost. Also, renaming objects or actions that have sounds associated with them is likely to cause issues. If you want to rename something, then please be sure to clear before you change its name. Although if you do screw up, it's not a major issue. Clear scene speakers will clear all the audio that this script has created. If you get into a pickle by renaming things and deleting things and find yourself with a bunch of anomalous sounds you can't track down, you can use this button to purge everything. You won't lose your settings, then you can go over things again and click generate once more. Something else you can try is if for whatever reason things go awry, is use the clear scene speakers button, then go to orphan data and click purge until everything's clear. There's an issue with Blender where things don't really get deleted fully, and on rare occasions this can cause an issue if you've been renaming things and not using this script in the intended way. You're unlikely to face this problem, but if you do, this is how you fix it. Likewise, a feature shared by the three types of audio is every object or action will have its own set of defaults. These are the default settings which the speakers will generate with. If you're familiar with the default speakers in Blender, you'll be aware of the different settings that speakers have. One for the volume, the pitch, the cone angles, the max distance. If you're unfamiliar with these, I suggest you just look up a tutorial for the default speakers in Blender. They're essentially the same settings. Changing these settings here will change the settings used by all of the sounds generated by the object or armature. However, if you want one or a few specific objects to have their own settings, apart from the default settings given to the rest of the items in the list, you can scroll down to the bottom and find an override drop-down. Tick the button, open it up, and you'll again find the same settings. The difference here is that while the defaults above will change the settings for everything in the list, the ones down here will only change the settings for the selected object, giving you full access to all the minute changes you may need. When you're generating audio with the action speaker or the motion speaker, you might notice that a speaker is being created. When you click on this speaker, you will find that there are no settings available. This is because the speaker is a placeholder and contains all of the audio generated by the motion audio or the action audio. This speaker is parented to the object by default, but you are free to move it around and change it and unless it gets deleted, its location will be preserved when you generate. This is useful for if you're using the cone or the outer cone volume settings, and for when the exact location that the audio is coming from makes a difference. By default, it's in the same location as the object, but if you need to give it a fine adjustment, rotate it, move it, you can do so, and it will continue to work as it should. Going to the list of sounds of any object or speaker or action, and you'll see here beneath the plus, minus, up, down buttons, there is another button. This button has three different icons to represent the three different states of being soloed. This icon here means that there is no solo and everything is playing as it should. All of the audio is playing, nothing is muted. When you click something, it goes to this filled in speaker. And now, only the audio within this list is being heard, everything else is being muted. So if you need to work on a specific object or action, 
and are getting distracted by the other sound effects of the scene, you can just click this solo button and have only that intrude upon your ears. All other objects will now have this empty speaker logo to represent that they have been silenced. You can simply click on the empty speaker to swap the solo to this action object or speaker. Or if it's a filled in one, you can just click it again to disable the solo. And have all of the audio unmuted and hearable. That's all I have for you this time. An overhaul of audio creation inside of Blender. Enhanced settings, automation and features never before possible inside of this piece of software. If you're seeking sanctuary from the perplexingly docile selections of settings and features, then look no further for enlightenment.